now I want to talk about the OR fragment of natural deduction, the OR game, I sometimes also refer to it, or you simply say you could say it's, these are the OR rules, rules for handling OR in natural deduction. And there are, uh, I will mainly focus on the, again this is just a supplement to the lecture, so I'm not going through all the motivation and all the different things, but I can just, just basically say that here's a idea, so this is the, the complicated non-trivial rule is the uh, OR elimination rule. So here is how, how it works. The idea is that if we from some, let's say, we have proved x or y, or we know x of y could be a premise or something, but we, this is a given x or y, and we want somehow to reason for some other statement set. We want somehow basically to justify this statement, but we want to use the fact that we have x or y. So. You can certainly see that it should be sufficient in order to, to, to justify a set. It should be sufficient if we also can argue that if we happen to be in a world or situation where x is the case, then certainly it logically follows that set is the case. If you also can argue that if you are in a case where y is the case, then set must follow. Then we are justified in set. And this is exactly what you see here is exactly the uh, or elimination uh, rule. It's simply saying that in order to we can justify a set given those three conditions, given that we have x or y, and but given also that we can argue that if x happens to be the case, then we have set, and if y happens to be the case, then we can also argue set. In the setting of a box proof, one way you can think about it is that if we have, uh, actually let me erase this and do it in, in as a box proof. In the setting of a box proof, imagine that we have, let's say, x or y, and again we want to do, to argue for some statement z. In some sense, you can see the way it works is that we want to split it into two cases. So the way I do it just now is not how it's done in GA and how we do it in general, but this is really illustrate the idea maybe a bit more clearly. So we want to derive z, want to derive some proposition z, but we, the given is that we know x or y. And we split it into two cases, we're assuming x, and then we say, okay, if you assume x, then as it happens, we can actually argue for z. But also, if you are in a world, or you can say if you are in a situation that we have assumed y, then we can also argue for z. So in this case, we are justified in that z here, because we have, because from this, we know x or y. We don't know which one necessarily. We just know that at least one of them is, is valid. And then we have argued, covered both cases, so to speak, so we justified in doing it. Now, the way we actually normally display this in, um, sorry, uh, where should it be? Erase pen, yes. The way we normally display it is in, in a linear fashion, not in a parallel fashion. So the way we do it in a box proof normally, if we have x or y, and our target is z, then we just split it into two cases, but we put them, so to speak, in, in, in serial display. So in the first box, we assume x, we derive z, and in the second box, we assume x, we derive or justify z, and in this case, we are justified to conclude z at this stage. So now let's look at some concrete example. Uh, so suppose we want to, actually let me do the simplest example possible, I think. That is like, if we say uh, no A or B, then from that we can conclude B or A. So actually there's also an implication involved here. So, in, so But suppose we want to, to justify this, then the first step of the implication is if we draw a box and we say well that's the same as saying that if you know a or b from that we can derive b or a but now um, you can see that we have an or up here and this is something that should be kind of automatic because you should reason the following way you should say we have a given a formula here that contains an or the only way we really can use this formula if you look at all the rules in general in 
natural deduction. It turns out that there's actually just really one rule that allows us to use this properly this statement, and that would be that we do an or elimination. But an or elimination simply requires that we simply means we get two we do get a case by case. So we have two cases. In one case, we one case A is a case, in the other case B is a case. If A is a case, well, we have to argue B or A because that is our target down here. This is our set, so we want to argue B or Z, B or B or A. As it happens, you can see we can justify that because we have A, and clearly from A we can also do B or A. This is actually the or introduction rule, one of the or introduction rules. In the same in the other box, we assume B, and we have to argue. B or A, and again, it's an, it's an introduction rule of the all. Now, I don't want to do the annotation here, so I'm doing it in JAPE, so you can see how it works in, in JAPE. Okay, so now let's see how it, it works in JAPE. So here we have the formula. I think that was the same formula as uh, did before. So we highlight the formula, and so we reduce the problem in showing this. So this is where we are using the or elimination. So let's now I will try different things to see how flexible JAPE is. So let's do this one. We know we are using that line and you're going forward and using an or elimination. Let's see if that is good enough. Sometimes you in JAPE you need to highlight more than one formula for it to work out. But I think this one should be acceptable. So we go to JAPE and we do an uh, we need to find or elimination. Let's see where do we have that. There's no or elimination here. But I'm going forward, you know, but Ah, all elimination, here we are, sorry. So I click on that one. Yes. You see it's split into two boxes exactly like we wanted. In one case we assume the A, and in the other one we assume the B. And recall that the targets in each of the boxes is the same as the overall thing we want to justify. Now we want to... Uh, here I think I have to highlight those formulas. So I want to, from assumption A, I want to argue we have B or A. So do a backwards and to do a it's an introduction. Let's see if that works. Uh, preserving right, this should work. No, it did not accept that. This is and this is typical when you work with JAPE. It's so let's see maybe forward introduction invents the left. Let's see if that works. Oh, you got this. This is also typical with JAPE that it even though you know what you want to do, you know, but somehow it comes up with some other formula. Let's go back here. Undo. Okay. Now let's see what could we try. We need to do an or introduction somehow. You need to. You can clearly justify this. We're just having a problem with making JAPE go from here to here. Why don't we just highlight this one and go back and then do an implication introduction preserving the right. Yes, that worked. So not so this was so okay. So you saw here how it works. So now let's try do the same in the second part. I'm doing backwards, learning from what we just did. Oh, but I made a mistake. I, I, I preserved the right hand side. It was the wrong rule because now we cannot justify that A. So we do an undo. We do backwards. Let's do, let's do but now we preserve the left. I think this one should work. Yes. So this is a complete proof we have here. Uh, but the key thing is in the in the or game, if you want, in what I call the or game or, or the or fragment of, of the logic, is um, how to use an or. So the all the lines are so to speak naturally annotated, except for line six. If you notice that this, uh, you see an or here, so it's kind of it's a bit confusing. But this or has nothing to do with the annotation. The annotation really, what is annotation is about, is it is saying we are doing an or elimination, as it happened in line one, and we are combining that with a deviation in the box from line two to three, and the other deviation in the box from line four to five, and combining these three different facts we have here, these different three different things, we can justify line six. So that is. How, how it works. Let me now I will give you some more examples. Now, um, 
let's look at a more complicated example in the or. But still, it's a, it's a fairly standard type of examples. Of course, it can be more complicated, but but this is sort of important to understand. So we, 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 the key thing here is that we, this premise we are given, we, want to, we need to use that, obviously. And the only way we can use a premise like that is through an OR elimination. So what I do is that I go f find here the OR elimination, uh, OR eliminations, and this is what we get. So from this, we see we now split into two cases. In one case, we assume this part, and the other case, we assume the C. And in each of the boxes, we are arguing for the whatever is our target. Um, let's see. We, we can now either we can we can do, deal with each box separately. Let's, let's try to do this box here in the top first. Again, it's the same thing. We have an assumption, but that assumption contains an all. So the automatic thing to do is to do a to basically realize that we must to somehow do an, an all elimination. So we're doing this here. So now you can see we have a number of different boxes. We have one box here, one box here, and one box here we have to justify. I don't know where we should start. Let's just start from the top. So from assumption A, we have somehow to get to this assumption here. But uh, the point really is that this is automatic because as soon as we we have I know all we can have we have a we can build up all sort of extra things we can add to the a by all the introductions. So I can do an all intro preserving uh, preserving right, and then I can go back again and do a preserving left. So this was that box. You saw I fumbled the boundary before, but now I learned from my mistake, from not mistake, but my when I explored J before. So now we, we can see how to do it. So let's see this one. We do a backwards. It must be a bad backwards uh, intro preserving the left. Notice by the way that we can do this in one go. We have the B, and immediately just in one go we can get B or the stuff we can add. The or introduction rules allows us to add any kind of formula we would like here. It says B, you can do B or, and then you can write anything down here. Wanted. So now we have justified that part of the proof. The only thing missing is this part, but again, that's the same as, as we already talked about. We do a, we split into this case. Oops. So I've clicked the one wrong, because now I have to go from C to justify the B. That should be clear. I cannot justify it. But a very, very important point I want to mention here you see, we have B up here, so couldn't we say, ah, we can justify that B because we have B here? No, absolutely not, because this B was made inside a box here that we had some assumption. Actually, it happens to be itself for an assumption, but inside that world, it's true we know B. But now we're in a different world, we're in a different situation. So you can you cannot use, in no way, we can use this B to justify this B. So actually, I have to do an undo here. So it's the other, it's actually this part to the right. I want to do so. We do and this one, I think. Yes. And now we do the same thing. So right. And lo and behold, now we have the proof is ready. It's being annotated and everything. I'm not going to do it by hand, but that's of course it's a bit deceptive when I do it here in J because it's it's actually in some sense a bit more clear how to do it when you do it by hand. So I recommend that you try to do it. These are similar type of problems by hand, step by step, and then you can, if you want, com compare to JAPE afterwards, you know. But please do them by hand and uh, and make sure that annotation, everything is correct, you know. And the, the key thing is really is, the most important thing is that it's okay to get stuck in some sense, but never try to justify lines wrongly. I mean, really make sure that you sort of justify each step. So, and if you get stuck, you can just indicate on the paper that you cannot justify a line or something, then you will definitely, uh, I see, this is, just don't try to fill it in with some things that are clearly not 